the evolution of engines. In this lesson, we will be talking about the evolution of engines throughout the history. Then, we will give special attention to the steam engine. But first, let's define an engine. What's an engine? An engine is a machine that converts energy into mechanical work. So in this definition, we have a machine, energy that goes into this machine, and the output, which is mechanical work that we can use to do different tasks. In the ancient times, humans were used as a source of energy. The machine was usually a set of ropes and pulleys that are used to convert the human energy into mechanical work. So men would pull ropes that are connected to pulleys in a certain way to enable them to do different kinds of work, like lifting heavy things, for example. By the first century AD, humans learned how to use domesticated animals as a source of energy. Now, cattle started to power the same machines that were powered by humans. But you see, animals are not an ideal energy source. They get tired and they have to sleep and you have to feed them every day. So our ancestors started to look for another source of energy that doesn't have all these problems. And they found what they were looking for in running water. They noticed that running water has energy and can carry pieces of wood or rocks for long distances. So they invented the water wheel to make use of this energy. These wheels are placed in rivers or water streams. The power of the running water will make these wheels turn. This movement is then transferred through a set of wooden axles and gears to the inside of the water wheel building to perform different tasks like milling grains for example. But water streams and rivers are not available everywhere. So again, our ancestors started to look for another source of energy that is not limited by the geographical location. And they found what they were looking for in the wind. So for the next generation of engines, our ancestors used wind as a source of energy. The machine, which was called a windmill, consisted of vertical sails to catch the wind and rotate. This rotation is then converted through a set of axles and gears to be used in milling grains or pumping water or any other type of work. It had the same basic idea of the water wheel, but it used wind instead of water. Water wheels and windmills served humanity very well, and some of them are still in use even today in some parts of the world but they are limited by the geographical location and the weather. You have to be near a water stream or in a windy location in order to use their power. So again, humans started to look for another source of energy that they can use anywhere they want. So they started to experiment with steam as a source of energy. If you ever try to cook, you will notice that if water is boiled in a cooker, the resulting steam will start to push the cover of the cooker. That means steam coming from boiled water actually has energy and can exert some pressure. So some bright minds thought, maybe we can use this steam as an energy source. So they designed engines based on this idea to use steam to do different mechanical work. People knew about the potential of steam as an energy source centuries ago. But it wasn't until the mid-18th century that a practical steam engine was built. The first steam engine looked something like this. Here is our boiler. The resulting steam would push against the piston. Aided by the weight of the beam, the piston will start to move up. To push the piston down again, cold water was injected to cool the steam down. So the steam will be condensed and the volume would be reduced creating low pressure. Because the piston is open to atmospheric pressure, the piston would be pushed down under the air pressure. Then the cycle continues. Steam would push the piston up, water would be injected to condense the steam, reducing pressure here, atmospheric pressure would push the piston down. Then other machinery could be connected to the piston to manipulate its movement to do different tasks. Because the atmospheric pressure 
is used in the operation of this engine, it is sometimes called the atmospheric engine or the new common atmospheric engine after its inventor new common. Steam engines improved a lot and were adjusted to do a variety of jobs. Their invention fueled the industrial revolution because now we didn't have to be near a water stream or in a windy location to run our machines. Now we can build a steam engine anywhere and use it to do work for us. One particular steam engine played a crucial role in connecting the world and pushing the industrial revolution to even higher peaks. It is the steam locomotive. The engine in the steam locomotive is basically a huge water tank. To produce steam from this water, a firebox was attached to this tank. The firebox is powered by coal. Now if you just lift the firebox in this position, heat will not reach all part of the water tank equally. And it would take a very long time to produce enough steam to move the train. So what do we do? We will construct some pipes to run through this water tank. This way, the hot gases produced by coal will pass through these pipes and heat would be distributed more efficiently in the water tank. And of course, we have to get rid of all these gases, so we will make all these pipes open into the chimney. Okay, so now we have boiled the water and the steam is coming up. The steam will be collected and directed through pipes to push against the piston. The piston is connected to the wheels of the train. So when the piston moves, the train will move also. Through a special valve, the steam will be directed to the opposite sides of the piston to keep the wheels moving and the train going. Let's review how it works again. Workers shovel coal into the firebox, hot gases pass through the pipes and boil the water in the tank, steam is collected and pushed against the piston to get the wheels moving. Although steam engines are a bit old, some versions are still in use even today. In fact, 88% of the electricity in the United States today is produced using steam turbines. And I think you will be surprised to know that the mighty nuclear submarine run basically on a steam engine. The big difference is that instead of burning coal to boil water, nuclear submarines use the heat from a nuclear reactor to do that. So steam engines are powerful and they have survived the test of time, but they still have some disadvantages. They are bulky, for example. You need to have a separate boiler to produce steam. Then you have to transfer the resulting steam to the engine, which is not very efficient. And moreover, Steam engines can be dangerous. In order to overcome these disadvantages, scientists and engineers designed and built the next generation of engines, the internal combustion engine. But we will leave that to the next lesson. Before we finish, let's recap real quick. So we defined the engine as a machine that takes in energy to produce some mechanical work. We have seen that throughout the history of mankind, we have used different types of energy sources to do work for us. We started by using human power, then animal power, then we learned how to use water energy and wind energy to power our machines. Then, in the mid of the 18th century, we have started to harness the power of steam to design all kinds of engines and fuel the industrial revolution. We have seen how the steam engine was used to build a train that connected the world together.